Hi everybody, it's Ellen again. I have another tutorial for you and this time it is going to be for my armadillo bracelet. Um, it's kind of a, looking at it from the top side, it just kind of looks like a bunch of connected parts. Um, here's one with just different color banding. Um, from the side, you kind of get this little spiky appearance, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I have another one here. Rainbow colors. i um, calling it the armadillo bracelet because when I was looking for a name, I saw a picture of an armadillo lizard and it was like all curled up in some guy's hand like this. And it, that's exactly what it reminded me of for this bracelet. So that's what we're going with that name. Um, but it's just kind of a little, I don't know, I just like how it kind of pokes out from each other. Um, it is on one loom, it's in the normal setup. Um, it's fairly easy banding, um, just kind of the looping is where it's a little different. Um, I think I had different bands for this one so it doesn't quite pop as much, but, but I think it's pretty cool so I wanted to share. But we will make this. Here's the underside by the way. Kind of, It's kind of a cool underside. And then the back side, or the top side. Well, I guess it's the underside actually, but alright, so we'll get started. So one loom, normal setup, and we're going to start by, um, we just lay each individual little, let's see, which one's best to show that, um, each little individual part, but we kind of layer them on top of each other, and that's how it gets the, the technique. Um, I'll show you, the bands that I'm laying right now are going to be the outside border of the piece, so it's the white on this one. Um, I guess I should also say before I go too much further, um, one loom length is 11 of these. I need 16 for my wrist for it to fit nice and comfortably, um, so you'll kind of have to gauge that once you get done. 11 is to there, so I mean it's only a couple inch gap in a difference so but you, it's easy to very easy to extend so um, I'll show you how to do that as well but back to the loom these are the colors I'm laying again are the white outside part and we're just going to make a little hexagon so starting in the middle pin go out to the right and then come up back to this pin and then do the same thing on the other side And then we're going to put an end cap on this pin right here. And it does show up if you want it to. Like this one, I just colored the end caps. It's kind of neat, like a little beaded effect almost. Um, but this one, I'm just going to put one on. I usually triple wrap them um, just to kind of keep the design in tighter. But that'll be up to you for that. Then we're going to lay bands for the center which on this one is the black black on the inside and then that, the black up back there and we do that by starting from the middle pin we go out to the right and then we go out to every pin except for don't go towards the end cap one and just push your bands down because we do lay on top of these a little bit. So that's what the main part of this looks like and we just repeat this pattern as we go along um, and it'll kind of overlapping. So the next one, so the same shape but the next one's going to start right here on this pin and we'll go out and make that same little hexagon shape like this. So just go right over the top of this one, of the one underneath that we just laid. And then the end cap again, three times around, and then do our filler bands, so the middle pin out to these five.
it does get to be quite a few bands on the pins here, but um, it's not bad when we loop it because we don't loop through all those. So, but then we just keep going. So then now our starting point will be the middle of our last one, our last little hexagon. And the end cap. And then our inside bands. So you just keep overlapping. Um, you can fit 11 of these on one loom. I think I said that earlier, but... And the filler bands. Oops. I got that end cap. It's not a big deal if you forget these because you can't put them on later as we loom. It's just easier if you do it now. And I know that I need 16 so I have a pattern that has four colors in it so I can alternate. But if you don't know how many you need you might want to try like two colors to start with, or more of a solid color. But I'll probably speed this up in editing a little bit through here till the end of the loom. But it's just the same repeating pattern. Starting at the center of the one you just laid, that's where the, the new one starts. All right, so I'm starting my last one here, and it's the same layout, 
as all the other ones. So if we need, add, need to add an end cap in the center of the design, and that's just for the the first looping purposes. So I'll show you. So the regular end cap that all the other ones have, and then you'll need an end cap on the center one, on this first one. I usually triple it as well. But if you have pretty tight bands, you probably don't have to. But that's all the laying of the bands that we have to do. So now we can loom this. And this is kind of where it's the neat part, I guess. Come in a little bit. So first we're just going to work on my blue hexagon here. So I'm going to go in and loom out the the bands around through the end cap. So let's grab the top one, pull it back towards itself, and do that all the way around. Like that. Then we're going to loom up the hexagon. So in through the end cap here, top band, pull it back. Make sure when you get up to right here, you don't grab any of those under bands. In my case, it's the white one from the um, under hexagon, but so just try not to get any of those snagged up in there. So now we have this. We have our first little hexagon loomed up over half of the next one. And now what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to pop off the sides of just the top hexagon. Well, oops. So now you see that I have my pink hexagon underneath here. So right now we're just going to actually go through here, which is now our center end cap for the next hexagon, and loom out what is in my case the white bands. So going through here, grab the top band, loom that out. There are a lot of bands on here, but it's not super tight. The bands just sometimes get stuck. But So then once you get those loomed out, now you come back here and you can pop this off all the way. So now it's hanging free, just trapped by these center bands right here. So then you'll come back under here, through the end cap we have on there, and loom out the hexagon. Just that top hexagon. And then do the same thing on the other side. And what's kind of neat about this is as you go along, you can actually see what your bracelet's going to look like when you're done. Because this, we're going to keep going, pulling things off as we go. Um, if you do have a problem where this pops off before you need it to, um, you'll just want to find this section of the bracelet. And I'll show you as we get, or as we get, actually I'll show you here. One that has a little more color. If you have a problem where you grab bands and you kind of mess it up and you're, um, you need to kind of fix it or take it apart, if you find this little center right here and you put your hook through there, you can take off whatever you need for bands to get back to that point and you can fix the bracelet that way. So like if you end up looping a bunch and need to fix it, um, this little center point right here is where you'd want to put your hook through and then just take off um, the bands. So this is where the connecting for extending would be too. I'll show you that because sometimes with the layering it gets a little more complicated. But So now again, we have this outside hexagon loomed up. We're going to take off the side bands like 
that. Then you go in through the center that we created, loom out those middle bands again. Like that. And then we can pop my pink one off. So I can start to see what it's looking like. And this is pretty well secure in here. So I mean it's not, shouldn't fall off once you get all these bands wrapped out when you're taking this off. But then you just come back and I'm going to loom out my next hexagon here with the purple. like that. So now we can take off the sides. And the reason why I take off the sides first is because if we don't, then these bands right here will get trapped on top of this pin and then it, the effect doesn't work the same. So, so we take off a little bit first before we do some of the looming here in the center. Loom out those center ones and come back here. Take this off. Oh, looking pretty cute. Nice spring colors. So I'm back in through here. We'll do the hexagon. Trying to keep my bracelet out of the way so you can see, and my fingers. So that's what we have now. So then again, take off the sides. And then go in through the center. back and let this one off. Then we'll loom up this little hexagon. And then take off the sides. And do the center again. Not that one. And then we'll let this off. And then do the hexagon. And the sides. And then pop it off back here. And then the hexagon.
on the sides. It gets very repetitive here, but I'm just showing because this is kind of the the part that makes the, the difference in the bracelet. It's actually the start to something I've been trying to figure out for a while, but I made this and thought it was adorable, so I wanted to share it with everybody. There's a center. Pop this one off. And do the hexagon. sides. Pop this one off. Do the hexagon. Sides. middle bands pop this off and then the hexagon sides and then we have one more to go. And then I'll show you how to extend it. Alright, so now once you get to here, you can just put your hook in through here, up to the open point, and just take this off. So here's what I have so far. I guess that's what it looks like stretched out too. But very cute, nice little pokey pattern. And sometimes when I pull them off the loom, I mess up the side bands, but you can fix those. But for extending this, I know that I need five more. Um, this is, like I said, 11. I like the back side too. Although I think it would might wear a little funny. But So, definitely need some more. Although for a child, you'd probably, it would probably fit. I think. But for extending this, I know I needed five more, so I just kind of imagined my way up the loom here for here's one and two. I want to up here and start it on what would have been the, the sixth spot since I can get 11 on here. So I laid five more hexagons. And then before we start looping it, um, this part that we took off the last one. You're going to put the the armadillo side or the spiky side. That's going to go down, so it should just be able to go right back on 
here off your hook. So we're going to put this open part into the center of our first hexagon. Like that. And then I usually just kind of stretch it down and pull like the first open part over something. You don't have to, but it just makes it easier when you're looping the center out so this is kind of pulled back out of the way. Otherwise it's all bunched up right around the pin and it's hard to see in there to get these bands out. But you just do the same thing that you did before. We'll start and do the center. Of course I may have pulled it a little too tight. So, center. And then once you have that, just flip it over and do the hexagon. So now this is attached for the next brace for the next portion and it'll look the same. So I'll run through this little part here and then I'll show you what it uh, finished looks like. And I'll show you what I would do to connect it. Um, so it kind of gives it a more seamless look. It's kind of neat, I think. All right, so I'm all finished. I'm just gonna take this off the loom, so stick my hook in the open point. And if you need to, stretch these back out. Like this one, when I pulled it off, it kinda got goofy, so. Stretch them back out if you need to. And then you'll take a clip Put it through the open point. And then when I close this, I would actually clip it to the underside of the first one, most likely to the, um, the end cap that we used the very first time. So the end cap in this first one, if you just clip your open part or your the other side to that point and kind of pull it around a little bit it actually when you're wearing it makes it look like the design is fairly seamless like there's no connection to it at all but I think it's pretty cool so I hope you enjoyed my tutorial for my armadillo bracelet I think it's pretty cute and 
definitely unique. I haven't seen one really like this, so um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to show me your pictures on Instagram and Facebook. Um, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see when I'm coming out with more designs. I have quite a few more coming that are um, kind of neat, kind of different. So um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And give one of my little armadillo bracelets a try. Thanks.